Miss Firefly from Black Swan. But we never expected Miss Robin to... Oh, I'm sorry, but I couldn't be with you then. Reality cruises on in serenity, while undercurrents bubble up from the dreamscape. Just like that memo keeper said. Stay strong, everyone. We can still do what we can for them. Starting with finding the murderer. Let's recap everything then. The trailblazer just reminded me of something. March, do you remember what that family rep who negotiated with us said? Uh, indeed we trust that the Nameless has nothing to do with this. And we also beg each of you to help assist the family in verifying the identity of the deceased. Uh, that's how it was put, in reference to Miss Firefly. Looking back, he seemed a little evasive at the time. And he also failed to mention anything about the earlier murder, too. The family's planning on covering up all news about Miss Robin's death. If news gets out, Penacony's going to turn into a bloodbath. But the murder that followed closely after was obviously beyond their anticipation. The family had to try and turn things to their advantage by bringing in reinforcements from outside. The Charmony Festival is nearly here. They must be snowed under. It may also be that Miss Firefly's murder had so many witnesses that it couldn't be covered up. So they went with the flow and let more people on the scene to control the situation. After all, the nature of the two murders is fundamentally different. The family's first protective measure should be against malicious actors among the guests, such as that IPC envoy. Indeed, he was particularly concerned about that Galaxy Ranger. Are we missing the forest for the trees here? I always felt that Aventurine's reasons for accusing Miss Acheron were highly subtle. Can we believe him? At this point, I'm afraid the only ones we can trust are ourselves. Look, let's try to gather intel first and then list all the possible outcomes we can. Then we go through them, eliminating contradictions one by one. The fewer facts remaining, the closer we are to the truth. I've still got this sense of foreboding. It's like we're stuck in a whirlpool, spinning around that legacy even after everything that's happened. Uh, this time we're playing the role of a real detective. But before we start, what are we going to say to the family and Aventurine? As I see things, the family harbors no ill will towards the Astral Express. If they didn't trust the crew, they wouldn't have casually commissioned outsiders to investigate a case that's in all likelihood a scandal. Plus, this is the family's turf. Teaming up with them should make things easier for us in the future. As for that Aventurine... Well, I'd like to hear your thoughts. He's complex. He deliberately slow-played his hand during negotiations while running circles around us all the while. He appealed convincingly to both reason and emotion. It wasn't forced, but the intent was obvious. Still, it's good to have contacts among all this uncertainty. Adventurine showed his skills, and as far as our interests are aligned, he can become a reliable ally. We also need to keep a certain distance from the family. Never let them get too close. Teaming up with the IPC helps balance that out. If either side makes a move, we have the option to pull out. So you suggest accepting Adventurine's proposal to team up? Yes. It's risky, but we can only wait until both sides have played their cards before making any further judgments. I get why, but there's a whole lot of bad guys and girls around here, and I'm worried about getting stabbed in the back. She's been bullied a few times now, and I can't stand it anymore. Uh, 
Are you... No, I can't accept this. Uh, forget about it. Just let me keep an eye on him. If that doesn't work, we can just turn the tables and use him instead. Then, could you please reply to Aventurine? Everyone, take this time to put together your thoughts. Looks like Aventurine is happy with this outcome. Let's tell everyone about it. Like a long face, buddy! Cheer up! Kick up! Oh boy! I'm eating too much this time! <laughs> Aventurine's goal is to try and recapture Penacony for IPC. To do this, he'll have to bring down the family in its entirety to create a big enough chance. The existence of death will be covered up by the family. So how does he plan on taking them down? It's gotta be something important enough that everyone will notice. But it also can't be anything too out in the open. Aventurine has devoted considerable attention to her, but this Galaxy Ranger, we know hardly anything about her and can't rush to any conclusions. Hmm, I was also considering this possibility, especially because he respects you so much and has sought you out before a few times. Perhaps he's also unsure of your intentions and is probing you. He's definitely going for the family, and it's just a matter of how. The harmony is strong in Penacony, and almost impossible to take on head to head. The fact that the IPC dispatched Venturine shows that they do not intend to simply play by the book here. An attack on the hotel guests? Unlikely. Penacone's guests include quite a few bigwigs known throughout the whole cosmos. People who not even the IPC would dare take lightly. Aventurine is a shrewd merchant, and there's no way he doesn't know that. I'm just speculating. In any case, we have to be careful when handling Aventurine. He's skilled at reading people and discerning the right moment to strike. Also, he's clearly a born gambler if he's willing to go all in to win. Aventurine said something that concerns me. He accused that Galaxy Ranger of killing Robin without any evidence whatsoever but said nothing about her connection to that memory zone meme or why he was stalking you. It was a groundless accusation, which only serves to make him seem more suspicious. Maybe Aventurine's goal was never to gain our trust. Maybe he wanted to foster a feeling of enmity towards Acheron and make the situation more volatile. Two birds, one stone. However, I asked Don Hung back on the Express to confirm that story about the Annihilation Gang and the lost messages. It wasn't something that Aventurine made up out of thin air. You've met her many times now. What's your impression of Miss Acheron?
That fits the stereotype of a Galaxy Ranger to a T. They're eccentric, unpredictable, and fond of being alone. No wonder she's a suspect. I really love Claudia. Checked off the list. I hope it's not too soon to bring it up. But I feel like Miss Robin isn't actually dead, but that she's still alive and well. Somewhere. That everything's just some horrible prank. Because aren't we supposed to be inside a dream? How could someone die in a beautiful dreamscape like this? Shouldn't only good things happen here? Whenever I see the Grand Theater, I just can't stop all these thoughts from flooding my head. Yeah, of course. At times like this, we're so lucky to have our crew. The family and the IPC. Everyone has their own plans going on. Everyone's still having a great time out there on the streets. Nobody knows what's happened. It's all so unreal. As if Firefly, Miss Robin, and us were all outsiders from another world. Aw, what a mess. I really want a nice cool drink of soda to help me calm down. Ah, <sighs> but... Then I'd be just like everyone else out on the streets. Uh. Looks like Adventurine doesn't need anything else. Let's turn our attention to the family's assignment for now. Himako, what do you think? Among our current clues, the two murders that she witnessed are the most directly connected. I suggest starting here. One thing I'm curious about is, if a person dies in a dream, what happens to them in real life? Seeing as we're at the family's behest, why not pop back out to reality and verify Miss Firefly's situation back at the hotel? Perhaps we could also make a few inquiries about her while out there. How about we split off into two groups? There are still some things worth focusing on inside the dreamscape. I'll investigate those, and we can link up again later. Worth focusing on? Oh. No problem. I'll leave it to you, then. Huh? Aw, I thought I'd finally get to see Himeko and Mr. Yang go out on a mission together. Oh well. Take care, then, Mr. Yang. <laughs> I will. Keep in touch. Hmm. Honored guest, uh, could you come out for a second? I'd be embarrassed too, getting stared out like that. Uh, forgive me. Uh, my name is Welt Yang. I'm one of the crew members on the Astral Express. I believe you've met my colleagues. Welt. Is there something about my name? First, don't you want to know my name? I already do, Miss Acheron. You're a prominent figure in Panacone. What are they saying about me? Some claim that you're the real culprit behind these murders. That the Annihilation Gang's tragic fate at the banquet was a result of your blade. And that you're now attempting to unleash another bloodbath on Penicone. The Annihilation Gang. Ifrit of Everflame Mansion. Tragic fate. That Duke turned his dying body to flames and sacrificed his life as a martyr. He was a determined and heroic pathstrider. 
Not even a villain should be disparaged like this. And what's more, there were plenty of suspects invited. Do they really think that a blade is more dangerous than that black hole you're wielding? Keen intuition. Not even the family managed to point out the truth behind this cane. So you must surely know, Miss Acheron, that peering into a black hole is not a wise move. As a potential threat, your knowledge of us has reached uncomfortable depths. Reveal your true identity and intentions. Otherwise, brace yourself for gravitational disintegration. That shouldn't be necessary. But if it makes the Nameless feel less defensive, I'll be happy to abide. Believe it or not, Galaxy Ranger, Acheron, those are the names I go by to this very day. My trip to Panaconia is solely to fulfill an old, final request. I'm here for the Watchmaker's legacy. And that's it. I think I've been honest enough. Still unwilling to reveal your true identity? It's not that I don't want to. It's just that I can't. I've come so far, and I can't sum up all of that in just a few words. Everyone has their own unspeakable past. Secrets that they don't want to be revealed. And I won't be asking any more questions, such as why the Astral Express is roaming around the cosmos with a Stellaron on board. <sighs> is she okay? That memo keeper didn't do anything, right? She's fine. Let's just stick with the topic. Gaining my trust depends on how much you're willing to reveal. I've run around many different Panacone dreamscapes just to try and find that legacy. And during this period, I came into contact with quite a few guests. In the process, I gradually came to realize the secret of Panacone may be closely related to the Trailblaze. That's why I've come to ask for your help. I don't have enough proof yet, but I'd like to speculate something. The source of all tragedy lies within the family. If you could trust me, we could find the proof to support this claim together. Mr. Yang, I think you've come to the same conclusion, haven't you? Let's leave it at that. For now, I'll choose to believe that you bear no hostility. Share your findings with me and me alone. I don't want vague conjecture to interfere with other people's judgments before we find solid proof. Mm-hmm. By the way, would you like something to drink? Before we go, how about two cups of wake the heck up? No, four cups because the conversation coming up will last forever. I've been watching her closely for a while now, and the first invitation was in the banquet hall of the hotel. She just sat in one corner, keeping silent, chugging down a couple cups of wake the heck up. I told her it's a pungent, bitter beverage, not the taste of sweet dreams, only for people allergic to soul glad. And she said, Really? But I don't taste any difference at all between them. <laughs>